Welcome back, it's me Lou. And today we're going to do a little bit of an unboxing and toy review. And we're looking at this. The Masters of the Universe Stratos action figure. Now this is part of the um, Mattel's... I want to say, I'm not sure if it's a reboot or whatever, but... It's pretty much them redoing Masters of the Universe. Um, you know, for a new age. And this is... The fans collectively call this the Masters of the Universe Origins line. So basically, they're taking the old classic characters, um, re-releasing them, and they look as close as possible as to the originals. The only thing different is, as opposed to the figures you got in the early 80s, these have modern technology, so the articulation is better, the accessories are better. So overall, you're getting the classic action figures, but with a modern toy experience. So yeah, we're looking at Stratos, the winged warrior. New for 21 and uh, I don't know, Mattel, I think they really do a great job with these. If you grew up during that time period, this is spot on. The packaging's awesome. Um, let's look at the back. Over here we have uh, beautiful painted artwork. Leader of the heroic bird people of Avion, Stratos watches over Eternia from high in the sky. And there he is with his loyal subjects, the bird people, and they're flying above their kingdom. And in the background, looks like you can see um, Eternia. What was that? Uh, which Eternia place that was at? I can't remember the name. I think it might have just been called Eternia. So in this line of action figures, um, for at least for this wave, you have He-Man and Skeletor, which I think they release with every wave. That's why there's so many of them um, warming up the pegs at the toy stores. You have Stratos, Hordak, Triclops, and Ninjor. And for Stratos' play features, he has clip-on wings. They throw onto the arms. And he can twist them in powerful battle positions. Now, I don't know if that necessarily means he's spring-loaded. I don't think so. I just think that, you know, that's just their way of saying, hey, he's articulated. And he comes with a comic book, which is a throwback to the old, old line of toys from the 80s so yep here's Stratos let's unbox them now the thing I hate about these is that I can never really uh, release the plastic from the board cleanly and I'm always scared that if I reach in and pull I'm gonna rip the comic book all right so uh, let's go in the trash So we have the little Stratos Masters of the Universe comic book. Now, I'm horrible. All the toys that have come out lately, I just take the comic books and I just throw them in the baggie. I never really look through them all that often. So I'm not sure if these comic books are specific to the character or if they're just kind of like, you know, they just run a new comic for each new wave. Um, but we'll take a look at that in a second. And let's get Stratos out of his little... Plastic prison. Okay, um, let's set this aside right here for now. And here's this bag of clip-on wings. We'll take a look at that in a second. All right, yeah, let's first, let's take a look at the comic book. I'm kind of curious about this. So this is Masters of the Universe Sneak Attack. And you have Ninja on the cover. And on the back, you have the characters that are included in this wave. So this is pretty cool. I think this is a... If you're new to Masters of the Universe, you're a free kid, this is kind of a fun introduction to the characters and the mythos and all the different storylines. They're well drawn. It's, it's, I think it's a cool freebie. 
I'd love for Mattel to just collect all the different comics and put it like in a small book or a you know graphic novel or something. That'd be awesome. It kind of bothers me that they don't. There's no credits in here. It doesn't say who who wrote it or who drew it. I don't think. Yeah, but this is nice. This is really cool. Okay. Uh, here's his baggie of clip-on wings. I hate these things. I can never get them open. Uh, just give me a second. I'm going to grab some scissors. That'll be easier. Alright, mental note, let's just keep these scissors here, so I'll always have them on hand. Oh, while well, I'm at it, I got, give me another second, I'm gonna grab something. All right, I'm here, I'm back. Okay, so here we have Stratos. And just like all the Masters figures um, of the new line, very articulated. Um, he has his classic color scheme, the red, the blue, and the gray. All right, so you have his now stratos is one of those characters when i was younger i thought he was the coolest thing until i realized that he was actually like like i knew he could fly you know that was a given but um when i was younger i was looking at him closely and i'm like why is he all covered in these feathers and fur and when it because i always thought it was just a costume but then um as i as, after i realized that this guy was just covered in feathers like he was an actual kind of like bird person it kind of like turned me off i'm like I don't know. I, I guess I like my superheroes non-feathery, but I love Beast from the X-Men, and he's covered in fur, so go figure. And I loved Hawkman from um, Buck Rogers. But yeah, I mean, I, th I still think Stratos was cool, but I think when I was younger, as soon as I realized that he was covered in, like, feathers and stuff, like, he was actually, like, a bird man, it kind of, like, weirded me out. But I think he's a really cool character anyways. And so yeah, this is jetpack kind of deal, or whatever this is. Um, <laughs> they almost look like, they almost look like dildos or something. All right, so, um, here's his, uh, clip-on feathers, or his clip-on wings. Am I doing this right? I'm not sure if I have them swapped on the wrong arms. Give me a second. All right, yeah, so I have them on the right arms. So, this is a really cool dude. Um, he has all the articulation you expect from the other Masters figures. He has the boot swivel. He has the rocker joint, the ankle joint, twist at the waist, um, arms, you know, the elbows, swivel. And I'm assuming, just like the other Masters figures, you could pop off, pop them off at the waist and at the arms. But I hate doing that because I'm always afraid that after a while they're just going to come loose. But, you know, that's a fun play feature if you're a kid. You need to do a lot of part swapping and make custom dudes. So this is a great figure. And I like him a lot. He looks awesome. It's really cool how um, Mattel's been good at kind of honoring the original figure line. Especially since, you know, the old school fans, they're just so adamant and passionate about the original figures. But, you know, for them to provide figures like this where... It's very much a classic aesthetic, but with modern tech in terms of like the articulation and the quality that's made. It's really cool. I kind of wish more toy companies would go that route. And, you know, kudos for Mattel for doing it. Um, my only complaint with the line is that it's so hard finding the new characters. They always sell it so fast. And you're just stuck. Like when I go to like 
Walmart or Target. All I'm stuck is seeing is He-Man and Skeletor, but it makes sense because, you know, there's, you know, they're the, the flagship characters of the toy line, and if you're a kid coming in, you want the main guys. Or if you're an older dude, you know, who grew up in the 80s, and, you know, for nostalgia purpose, purposes, you just want the two main characters that are always available, but it'd be great if they started, um, you know, if these were easier to find. And I haven't been really catching up with the news too much, so I don't really know what their plan is, but it'd be cool, if, I think, if at some point, you know, besides it's doing what, you know, they might call them, like, repaints or variations, but it'd be kind of cool if they gave these characters new sculpts, like, with a m much more modern aesthetic versus, you know, than the classic look here. Now, um, I went to grab a second ago, that's why I left uh, the table, um, this figure. Um, I actually have this another one of these unboxed, but it's like in a bin somewhere, and I don't want to go f hunt them down. So this is Rey Mysterio of the Masters of the WWE Universe toy line, and it's also made by Mattel. And these are all these these are pretty much you know this line pretty much runs in tandem with the normal Masters line, and they share you know very similar sculpts. Uh, you know the play features and. Uh, Articulation is the same, but the reason why I pulled this guy out is because the Rey Mysterio figure, um, he's very much designed and based after Stratos, you know, because Rey in the, you know, real life Rey Mysterio, he's a high flyer, awesome wrestler, and this is cool how they took the inspiration of Stratos and applied it to Rey Mysterio. But the thing is, when this figure first came out, I was under the assumption that um, all the accessories he came with would be the same accessories they came that came out with Stratos. You know, because this came out well before this figure did uh, recently. And I was kind of thinking they were going to do that with a lot of the Masters lines. But, you know, to my surprise, they actually gave these guys, you know, unique, unique accessories altogether. So it's kind of cool that even though Ray shares a very similar... Um, chest strap and like bat backpack it's not the same as one stratos has and raven has clip-on wings like stratos but it's a completely different mold and sculpt so it's pretty cool how you could kind of like intermix you know these characters and if you want to so you can exchange your accessories since the figures are the same size so that's really awesome um <coughs> excuse me so um besides looking at this guy I wanted to compare him to one of the more recent versions of Stratos that came out. And this is the Super 7 one. And the Super 7 one was... This one's based more off the animation model from the early 80s cartoon. And uh, this came out, I'd say, maybe like a year or two ago. It's... So when Super 7 had the rights um, to make the 5 and the five and a half um, inch figures... They're releasing a lot of the classic characters, but they're based off more so on their appearance in the cartoon. So they're these are you know these are based off the animation models, and uh, everything. Even though they look very similar to the old '80s figures, they're made of much harder plastic. Their articulation is very similar, um, except one thing I'll give them credit for is because I, I mean as much as I love the classic figures. The Super 7 ones, they don't have the, those rubber bands on the inside that like degrade over time and then they snap. Uh, so, yeah, here's Stratos from the, from the Super 7 line. And if we compare them, you can see um, the difference is also because I mean th this is based off the original line and that's about five and a half inches tall and as I said in the previous video I think the Masters of the Universe Origins line they look like they're five and a half inches but once you extend the legs fully they're I think they lean a little bit closer to six inches so it's a little bit taller but the proportions are still kind of the same now I can see the sculpts are completely different too um they both kind of have almost like that monkey looking kind of face. Um, this one's definitely more streamlined. 
the body's very basic and generic. It doesn't have like the sculpted fur and feathers. I don't like the clip-on wings on the Super 7 as much. They feel very generic. It, they're almost kind of like those um, those ju fake plastic jewelry and rings you get out of gumball machines. And But I mean, they, they, they do what they do. They clip on and um, he has his jet pack here. And I think you can't really remove this, unlike this one. The Origins one, you can just like, there's buckles and straps that make this removable. This one, I think you have to like actually detach the arms to take it off. Or I think it might be glued in the back. All right, so this one's, so we have the Super 7 one. And then uh, another one we have, this is a Mattel one also. This is, oh crap, okay. This is the Classics one. And I just realized it now, my classic one's kind of defective. Like the ball joint here at the neck. I don't know what's going on here. Alright, so. Here's the Classics one, but this isn't the actual mainline release of the Classics uh, Stratos. This is the this came in the DC um, Classics and versus Masters of the Universe Classics 2-pack. And this came with Hawkman, I believe. And this guy's cool. I think of all, if you had to compare these three figures, this is the most premium. And I can't remember what year the classics came out in. This it was, it was a while ago. But this is a great figure. I, I mean, I, I kind of, I was kind of out of the loop with when the classics lines came out. I was more about just collecting Transformers and I think um, GI Joes. But. I had friends that were really into the classics line. I was always very jealous of them. <laughs> but the thing is, I already at the time, I already had a complete... I mean, at least... Well, not necessarily a complete set, but... Um, I had all the main characters I wanted, but for the 2000X um, line of Masters of the Universe figures. And speaking of the 2000X line, we have this guy. Now, that these were designed by... I believe it was the Four Horsemen. Um, that art studio. And this guy came out in 2001. And I love uh, the 2000 X line of figures. I think they're great. Um, I can't remember. I'm scared to move his, mess around with them though, because I don't know how much of this guy, like what's art what's articulated and what isn't. But this guy came from a, a time period where, I th at the, at least for me, uh, I fall into the minority now. I prefer great sculpts versus articulation, and I think some of the members of the Four Horsemen studio, I want to say they might have been uh, former McFarlane employees, which explains why there was such a higher level of detail in these figures. The only thing is, back then, it was weird, because you'd come out with these super articulate, not art articulate, super detailed figures, but the articulation was so lacking. You know, th this guy's kind of like already pre-posed, and you can move his legs and stuff, but it's like, what's the point? Because you can't really do much with him. But in terms of the sculpt, it looks really cool. And these their figures, they're posed so dynamically, and they, uh, I don't know, I just, I'm very nostalgic for this time period, the late 90s, early 2000s of action figures. But then, you know, this came along, and this kind of, at the time, this kind of blew everything out of the water, the classics line, because you had larger scaled figures. And I think Mattel was really ahead of their time, because and these are like, well, like six inch scaled figures, the... 1 and 1 12th, or the 1 12th uh, size scale. And they were super detailed, super articulated, and they look great. My complaint with some of the uh, classic stuff is I think that some of these might have broke easily because I collected, um, I was late to the, the, the party, but I collected DC Classics, and I remember getting so many of those figures that were like broken or had some sort of weird quality control issues and doing some research online I think the classics line kind of suffered from that also so yeah we have a handful of Stratos here to look at um, they're all fun they're all awesome they're all unique this is the one that I think kind of encapsulates what the modern collectors looking for they want the classic aesthetic but they want the modern technology so we have all the bells and whistles of the modern stuff, especially with the articulation. 
But at the same time, even though you have, you have the articulation, you don't necessarily, they're not compromising in terms of the, the look and the aesthetic of the classic character. So the Origins line, you know, for a modern figure, this is excellent. The Super 7 stuff, it, I don't know, this holds a special place in my heart. I mean, it's kind of a recent line, maybe came out about like two or three years ago. Uh, but even though the figures, there's just kind of a generic feel to them. But I mean, that's not, I, I, I don't mean it in the disparaging way, but, you know, the original figures, not that they were generic, but they all kind of shared a very similar mold and quality to them. And I think this, for me, this kind of, it's a nice throwback to that. But, I, you know, some of these accessories, like this thing doesn't stay on. It keeps on falling off. It makes me crazy. Now, if I had a time machine, I'd go back and actually try collect the um, classics line of figures. This is kind of more my speed. Um, you know, they're, they're larger. You know, they're, Mattel is really ahead of the game here. You know, because people are always talking about how great Marvel Legends figures are, but... I don't know. When you had some of these Masters of the Universe classic figures in your hand, you know, they were like way ahead of the curve. And I have a feeling, I think at some point in time, Mattel will probably come back and revisit these six inch figures. And I think they are actually, but um, I, don't I remember someone sent me a photo of some possible six inch figures, and I think people are kind of like dissing them because I think the designs weren't too hot. But we'll see. You know, it's early on. Maybe they'll really really something different but the, cl the classics line's cool and the 2000x line's awesome you know i like this guy he's dope i really want to twist him at the waist but i'm scared to because i had a man at arms that i twisted at the waist and it just cracked because i'm not sure how fragile this plastic gets over time especially since this thing's like 20 years old already but he's still cool looking i mean they kind of you know th th redesign him to look like how he does in you know, at least for what we imagined in 2001, what a more modernized version of Stratos would look like. Like, you know, you have these things here, which is, I think it's kind of fun that you can, like, actually adjust his wings. And then on the back, you got the play feature. And the sculpt's really crisp and nice. So, yeah, here's a look at Stratos, the Birdman from the He-Man universe. He's really cool. Um, this is a very sloppy video. <laughs> I apologize for it. I, I don't know. I'm just all over the place today. So hopefully I got this all in frame because I'm, I'm like, as I'm reviewing these toys, I'm not actually looking at the table. I'm looking at a monitor and I go back and forth and then my eyes are like, I don't know. I'm just being crazy today. And I'm a little bit under the weather also. So that kind of explains why I'm sounding the way I am. But yeah, I've rambled on much longer than I would have liked to talk about, but Stratos is awesome. Um, you know, I highly encourage you to collect Stratos and assemble your own Stratos family like I have here, you know, with Grandpa Stratos, Daddy Stratos, um, I don't know, this is Stratos when he's, like, looking smooth, and Stratos when he's, like, on Facebook. So, yep, thanks for checking this out, and I'll see you later. Take care.